question is from Caffeine and Counseling. Do you recommend taking body measurements or is this a waste of time? I, I actually like body measurements more than uh, the scale. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I like body me measurements more than the scale is because, you know, oftentimes you get a client that you'd be training them for a little while and they, the scale wouldn't move that much, maybe a couple pounds. And they're mm -hmm. like, wow, I, you know, I, everybody keeps telling me I lost a lot of weight. Like, how is this possible? The scale only says two pounds. I feel like I'm a lot leaner. Like, what's happening? Then I measure them and I'll show them. Right. Well, you lost two inches here. Yeah, you lost your waist. three inches there. Uh, muscle is dense and fat is less dense. And so a pound of muscle takes up less space than a pound of body fat. And measurements will show you what's going on when the scale may show you nothing's going on. Yeah, it's both sides of that, right? I have a muscle gain goal. Like, it's going to show, like, the muscles, if they're actually growing. Like, that's a tangible thing that you can kind of lean on or yeah. whether or not, like, you're addressing your body fat issues, like, in certain areas of your body. It's it's just another piece of feedback, so, right? It's a metric. It's just, yeah, it's another. Uh, personally, uh, maybe when I was really, really early years, I started to, the thing that made me stop, I guess, um, I remember it was a, a thing that happened to me. I remember the first time I got really lean and everybody thought I was bigger, you know? And I was yeah. like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw that out. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, here I was measuring my biceps every week. <laughs> and they shrank an inch. Yeah, they all yeah. shrank an inch and everybody thought I was more jacked. And I was just like, well, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. So why am I taking all, why do I care if my biceps go up one more inch if I create the illusion? So I don't know. Um, I, 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 but I, I'm the big tracker guy. Like I'm, I'm all about tracking everything. And I think the more metrics you have, yeah. uh, the, the better insight you have on your body. And I see lots of value to all metrics, especially early on. It's That's just how I, I mean, I honestly, every client that I had like going forward at one point, I'm like, I just want to aggregate as much information as possible. So it's reference. Mm -hmm. you know, points of reference. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to be brought up constantly. Does it need to be a neurotic thing that I'm always like trying to hammer and address? It's just something that like, oh, well, let's go back and let's refer. Mm -hmm. But let's see where we've come. You know, if, if this is a question or something that's popping up, you know, I do have, you know, sufficient data to then pull from. Well, you know, as far as like singular pieces of information that can predict, you know, your health or predict, you know, health problems, um, by the way, no single piece of information is perfect. You want to look at a lot of different pieces of information to get a good picture. But if you had to pick one, one of the better ones is actually waist, uh, waist measurement, mm -hmm. just measuring your waist. Um, they find that your health is at risk in men if your waist measures over 37 inches and for women – uh, uh, about 31 and a half uh, inches or more. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, they, and they've, they found that pretty strong correlation. I know Doug, I, you know, when I train Doug, and Doug, do you still do that every morning where you weigh your, your I do. Weight? I don't like what I see right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I thanks for bringing it up, I asshole. guarantee it's significantly lower than 37, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But, but that, that's what I did. I measured it every day for a year and a half. Did you really? Yeah. It's a know. very simple way to measure. Because here's the thing, like, let's say you're lifting, let's say you're a man, you're lifting weights, that you're gaining weight on the scale, but you're getting leaner, your waist measurement goes down, even though you're building more muscle. I mean, obviously in bodybuilding, um, one of the, 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 the key things that they look for is a small waist, mm. you know, with everything else. So, um, that's, so measurements are actually a decent way to measure your progress, but by themselves, they're not going to tell you, you know, everything, obviously. I just think that, I think all these things are great. There's a lot of people that crack on uh, the the tracking and I know right now I got a question the other day on my Q and A about you know what I think about is is counting calories that bad? It's what Instagram is saying right mm -hmm. now. Everybody is now jumping on the bandwagon of tracking food is bad or whatever. And it's like all, everything can become uh, addictive. Everything can become something that you become obsessed with, and it could have negative uh, impacts on you for sure. But I think if your approach to it is you're using all this information just to help get gain more insight on, on your own body and how it responds to things, and I think it's all good. And I think mm -hmm. uh, I think it's good for people to do it um, at the at the beginning of really learning. But you know, there comes a time where hopefully you you figure this stuff out. You understand what a protein is, a carb is, fats, how much your body needs, what happens when you do good on it, what happens when you don't do good on it. You've tracked your body fat percentage enough times to realize that oh my god my weight can be up could be at the same weight which I, this is why I love this like 
you know, I, I've I've been 220 pounds and had like five different dramatically different looks and levels of health. Like you, mm. so weight doesn't. I mean, it doesn't matter that much. And and that's why I think it's important though to track those things because I wouldn't have known that had I not tracked. Sure. And it really kind of gives you more insight on oh wow that it doesn't just matter my body fat percent or it doesn't matter just my weight or it doesn't just matter my waist or what it what it measures. You start to put all that stuff together to have a better understanding. And then eventually you you, you become in tune and you feel yes. it. You could totally feel yes. it. So, so this is cool. Check this out. So according to the World Health Organization, your risk of metabolic complications such as type 2 diabetes increases when a man has a waist to hip ratio result of more than 0.9 and a woman has a result of more than 0.85. Zero, exp explain that? Waist to hip ratio. No, I get that. But what's the? How do, what do they show? They divide the two. Okay. Yeah. So for a man, if it's uh, if it's more than zero point nine, your risk of metabolic complications start to rise. Obviously, the bigger you know the the the, the more, more the higher over that ratio, the worse. And for women, it's zero point eight five. And then a two thousand and eleven review of studies showed that waist circumference and waist to hip ratio was had a more direct link to health conditions than BMI. So that's why I like you know if you had to compare the two measurements, body measurements mm. are better than than the scale. Um, so if anything's to, better than BMI. It's yeah, almost <laughs> it's so stupid, yeah, right? I'm surprised that we even still have those in, in well, offices and we they, we're actually obese people. It makes sense. They just needed something simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, boom, here's your BMI. It's yeah. an easy measurement. You're just heavy. Well, I don't and, have to do anything. And when else. it was created, I would I would assume that uh, the population that was truly lifting weights and exercising was probably really, really small. It right? still is. Yeah. Right. It still is. Right, right, it is. It's if you to be lean and have a high BMI is still pretty rare to the point where if you get life insurance. You have to tell them. You have to tell them. You call them when they say your height and weight. You say, oh, but I'm athletic. But I have muscle. Yeah. Well, I remember that's why one yeah. of the reasons why we liked. Remember when we used to work with Health IQ? That was one of the great things. They were like one of the few insurance companies that like take that into consideration. That no, nobody's really looking after these people totally. that <laughs> that actually work out. Totally.